Friends, we're live. It's Stevie from South Dakota, also known as Prairie Pheasant. Lots of things on my mind. Uh, how can there not be? Uh, you know, we're living on the brink of the rapture of true Christians any day, week, month now. Uh, having said that, I confess that a year ago, I didn't believe that, you know, the rapture, that I would still be here a year later, um, that I would have been raptured by now. So I, uh, but I'm still holding to my guns. I mean, I don't think we're talking decades and centuries before the Lord returns. And this video is for people who believe uh, three things. Uh, they believe Jesus Christ actually existed. They believe he died and rose from the dead. And they believe he's coming back again. So that this video is for those people. This is not a video to convince people of the reality of the historicity of Christ. It's not to convince them of the reality and miracle of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this video is not uh, presented to those uh, who obviously they don't believe the first two. They're not, not going to believe he's going to come back. So if they don't believe a person existed, uh, I guess the other two, uh, his death and resurrection and his return are uh, meaningless. Okay, so we know, we who have been watching for the signs, as Jesus said to do, Paul talked a lot about the signs, Peter did, uh, in the Old Testament, Daniel, Ezekiel, uh, I think Hosea, almost, well, in Jeremiah, almost, Isaiah, almost all of the Old Testament prophets talked about the latter days of human history, and they wrote mostly about the time of Jacob's trouble, which... Um, well, I guess you could construe that to be either the last, you know, the seven years of the tribulation period or the last three and a half years uh, when the Antichrist, uh, at the midpoint of the seven year period, the Antichrist declares himself God and basically sets up shop in the rebuilt uh, Jewish temple. And, uh, you know, from that point on until Armageddon, the, uh, the judgments of God, the wrath of God falling upon a very wicked and unbelieving world just crescendo like crazy. The first three and a half years, I'd have to revisit this, but I don't think, I mean, the seal judgments might start to happen at some point in the first three and a half of the seven years. I have to revisit that. I don't quite remember how that goes down. Or uh, it also begins to take place in, once the Antichrist declares himself God and sets up shop in the rebuilt Jewish temple. Uh, some sometime fairly soon after that uh, the judgments um, start to take place i.e. the wrath of God as I said upon a wicked and brutal world and wicked and evil world um, there are in Revelation there are 21 judgments broken up into three categories if you will there's the seal judgments which are you know the the, the quote-unquote mildest but they're they're very severe and as an aside, for those who think that we're into some part of the seal judgments now and that we're in the, the first stages of the tribulation period, the seven-year period, you simply cannot read those seven seal judgments and, and actually believe that we're at any stage of them, whether we're in the first one, two, three, or whether, like some people teach, that we're, we're now in the sixth seal judgment, you know, moving toward the seventh etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so you know that that's essentially the, I guess the point being is that we are very close to these 21 judgments uh, oh the other two uh, categories are the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments and there are seven in each of those categories so 21 total and um, so we, in my opinion, we're not decades or centuries away from uh, what is also, well, the time of Jacob's trouble and also known as uh, uh, the, the tribulation period. It's a se Oh, no, the se excuse me. The 70th week of Daniel are the last seven years of human history and the last seven years that God deals with Israel um, uh, you know, the last seven years that where God deals with the nation of Israel, which of course has been restored from all the nations after being basically 2,000 years uh, into the, um, uh, you know, the diaspora. And so God brings them back and uh, restores them. But then there's going to be a seven-year period uh, 
It's the same thing as the tribulation and the time of Jacob's trouble, I think, is the last three and a half years of that seven-year period and uh, that will be determined upon the Jewish people. And then Daniel says, this is called the 70th week of Daniel, that we've already completed 69 weeks of years, okay? It's called weeks of years. Um, and that's a little bit complicated, but it's, but it's also very easy to understand if you just concentrate what the 70th week of Daniel is. I don't want to get into that in this video. I'll probably do a separate video on that because it's so critical to understanding, number one, that the tribulation period uh, is ahead of us, and number two, that the pre-tribulation rapture is the correct biblical position versus the mid-trib or the post-trib, uh, or there are some people that are a-trib. They don't think it's you know going to happen at all. Most of those would be the reform people um, and so on. But I'll probably do a separate video on that. Um, so I guess backing up now is that I feel that the signs of the times, as I started to talk about, that are mentioned both in the Old and New Testaments, have been crescendoing incredibly in the last, really, two decades, and even before that. But since the COVID thing hit, and all of its types and shadows that are associated with that, for example, the COVID passport, which has been used in several countries, I know France was using it quite severely, where if you didn't have a, a proof of vaccination, you weren't even going to be able to get into a shopping uh, excuse me, a grocery store and buy food. And so interestingly enough, Revelation 13, 16 through 18, uh, which is written, to, you know, 2000 some years ago, specifically says that the Antichrist and the false prophet will cause everybody that remains in the earth, that would be the people that were not raptured, okay, and taken out of this earth uh, before the tribulation period and the reign of Antichrist and false prophet begins, they will cause, the Antichrist and false prophet will cause everyone to take a mark in the right hand, in the forehead, associated with the number 666, which is the number of the beast, okay? And that, and listen to this, and that no one will be able to buy and sell without that mark. And then in the next chapter, Revelation 14, God says that anyone left on earth that has not been you know, uh, raptured, anyone left on earth that takes this mark in order to basically function in the world, okay, function in society, i.e. buy and sell, uh, if they take that mark, they will be consigned to hell for you know, eternity. There's no, God made it very clear there, and then I think there was another scripture, a parallel one, I have to run that down, but it's very clear in Revelation 14 that God is not gonna say, uh, yeah, I forgive you, et cetera, et cetera, because what you've done when you take that mark, you have basically given your allegiance to the Antichrist and his whole beast system, okay? And we're definitely seeing strong types and shadows, not only of this mark of the beast, vis-a-vis -vis the COVID passports and all the restrictions that, you know, I, th I think you can't fly now unless you are vaccinated and so on and so forth. And I believe that narrative is going to continue in a very strong way. So, but you have these strong types and shadows of Revelation 13, 16 through 18, uh, and you also have with all the, you know, you can't see anything today without hearing about uh, the, uh, the blanking out, the Bitcoin, and uh, uh, what's the other major one, uh, the currency, cryptocurrency, uh, you know, clearly that, either those two will combine into another name, but the point is, these are digital currencies that are... Um, going to be the one world currency, which of course, people that are biblical watchmen have been talking about the one world order, which means a one world economy, one world religion, and a one world government. And we basically have them all in place in a very strong way. And all we need now is a trigger and a catalyst to move us into what I call full on tribulation, where the Antichrist and false prophet now have been basically inhabited by Satan and they will be given their, you know, fulfill the roles of the, of the, you know, the Antichrist and false prophet and then they will be able to embark on all these plans like marking everybody in the right hand or forehead and they will be subject uh, citizens of the New World Order apparatus, the whole New World Order shtick, if you will. And uh, I'm, I, I have warned people for decades, literally, about if, if you are left behind, if you, you know, people like me that you've known and other Christians, if they suddenly disappear either in front of your eyes or they're gone, 
you try to get a hold of them, you can't find them. And then you hear, like in the news, oh, there's just all these people all over the world that just suddenly disappeared. And of course, I've already mentioned in an earlier video that the New Agers will have a uh, explanation for that, that these were aliens that took the Christians for re-education. So, but anyway, if, I have said this for decades. If you um, have been left behind and you know that, I have said, do not take the mark of the beast in the right hand or in the forehead. But like I said, we are so close. If we're already seeing strong types and shadows of the entire beast system, then I've argued that Obama and the Pope Francis, at a minimum, they are perfect prototypes for the Antichrist and false prophet, respectively. I said they're perfect prototypes. Does that mean a as perfect or more perfect person could come along and replace Obama as uh, of who I think will end up fulfilling the role of Antichrist? Could there be another religious leader like the Pope, like say the next Pope, that could be an even better candidate or at least as good, and then they end up being the ones? Of course that could be the case. I mentioned Obama and the Pope because number one, I think they definitely will play those roles and so that if you're left behind and then suddenly these guys are running the world and you remember people like me warning you about this, then hopefully you'll be smart enough and courageous enough to not take the mark in the right hand or forehead. But what's going to happen is that you're going to be incarcerated because you won't take the mark and then eventually be headed for the witness of Jesus. But like I say, you know, how many a, a day's torment of waiting to be executed and having your head removed from your body and then instantly in heaven, don't forget that part, and instantly in heaven is a lot better option. Uh, I guess, and I'm not a Trump fan, but you know, as Trump calls the art of the deal, the, or the deal of the century, that compared to taking the marks, you can be comfortable in the world, buy cars and go on vacations and buy food, whatever. Uh, yeah, you're going to live really well for, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years until Armageddon, and then you'll be in hell for eternity. It's a no-brainer on which one to choose, but clearly, you know, we always want to put off uh, suffering, right? So I think a lot of people, sadly, even though they've been warned not to take this mark in the right hand or forehead in order to buy and sell, they've been warned about this. My fear is that they will just, just like I've noticed during the COVID crisis, you know, everybody just said, well, we're not going to protest. Sure, we'll wear masks. Sure, we'll social distance. Sure, we'll quarantine ourselves in our homes. Sure, we'll uh, work from our homes now, and we'll just close our offices up forever. And, yeah, we'll just close down our business because we're getting government money and uh, da 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 And uh, I saw how easily people capitulated to what is the B system in heavy formation, the whole COVID thing is really the last straw, or I should say the last prop put into place by the beast system, which will be led. They will be led by the Antichrist and false prophet. The COVID thing, I mean, 9-11 sort of kicked the door partway down. The, the COVID shtick absolutely flattened the door, and now they're setting all the props up for everything to happen. And like I said, the only thing now standing between us and this new world order, the beast system, and the two leaders in power, the only thing that is keeping that from happening are the fact that true Christians, people that have been born again in Christ, have not been raptured yet. But when they get taken out of the world, and you'll know it if you're left behind, because it'll, be it'll be like, wow, where'd they all go? Then that is when the clock starts to tick, uh, and a countdown, seven years to Armageddon, okay? So, I'm telling you, if you're a religious person but not born again, ditch your religion. Ditch it. If you have a drinking or drug issue, ditch it and run to Jesus and say, ask him for forgiveness and tell him that you want to live for him and tell him that you know these are the last, last days before he returns and say you're excited for him to come back. I sure am. I can't wait. And, and, and again, just be in a repentive mode and say, Lord, what do I do now? You know, I, I, I don't want to live the way that I've been living. I don't want to live for the world system because it's satanic, it's ugly, it's wicked, it's evil, and it ends up in hell. Now, there you have it. You're not going to hear that from your pastor on Sunday, I'm pretty sure, or your priest for my uh, Roman Catholic friends. Uh, what was that? Uh, losing my religion. Wasn't that like a, I don't know, it was a movie or something. 
but I'm, I'm urging people to lose their religion and find Jesus Christ. Have a good one. Good to talk. See ya. <laughs> Ciao.